Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Lay out the path to the shift because I want to know, even personally, I want to know like what started to transpire where this shift started to actually solidify. Because I think a lot of people they'll read the books, they'll they'll do the podcast, they'll even get a coach, but the shift won't actually take place. It's just kind of like top of mind. Was it through execution? Was it through proving yourself right? Was it through like what was really happening in your day to day that was building your confidence in the shift in the mindset? Yeah, for me, it was the execution. Um, I feel like a good chunk of people, and I've been able to talk with quite a few people on kind of a more a coach role now, and people will invest in the books, they'll invest in the podcast, they'll invest in courses uh, and, and, you know, in different mentors. But the part where hesitancy and inaction takes place is when it's actually time to take that next step and execute. I think execution, even done like imperfectly, it's going to teach you so much more about the process and about yourself than any perfect action or inaction is ever going to do. Because for me, I was willing to, there's this really good quote. It's by a guy named Eddie Pinero. And uh, he, he says, I was willing to make failure an old friend and walk hand in hand and side by side with them. And that's really when I realized, even when I failed or even when things didn't go right, that I could come back from it, but also learn from it and make it better the second time around. I think that was when I truly started realizing there's no hole that I can't get out of. Uh, there's, there's no obstacle that's in my way that either through my network or me personally, I don't have the skills to overcome or I can acquire those skills to overcome. And so for me, like before when I was working like as an accountant, like I went to, I went to school, um, did like all of that. And I didn't pick up like a book or like really listen to a podcast besides like comedy podcasts or like, uh, you know, just casual, like entertaining podcasts. And then when I made that decision in May to really invest in myself, I was like, okay, well, you know, he recommended a few different books. I started reading and just being able to act on those in congruence with like my journey that I was reading in these books and then acting on them uh, made all the difference. Yeah. And, and action is the cure all, you know, and I, I think about that every single day, it's you, you look at what it really requires is, and, and I think everybody at some extent kind of gets caught up in the, the learning phase of life where you're just consuming, 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 but, but ultimately it is action. It's the willingness to take all of these lessons, all of this information that you've learned and you've garnered and be able to effectively deploy it in, in real time scenarios. And, and I think what happens, and, and this is my experience, cause I've been an entrepreneur for a very long time, but in the beginning there was a, a fear, right? And even this subconscious fear, if I go back gosh, almost 15 years now, thinking about even the way that I was pricing myself in the world, it was like, I'm scared to ask for what I know I'm worth. And I think that's one of the really difficult hurdles that people have to overcome. And, and that's realizing that for a long time, and really for the majority of whether it's in school or it's in real life and you're in career, the world kind of tells you, hey, you're worth $46,000 a year, you're worth $80,000 a year. And then you go, well, how do these guys over here make $80 million a year? And, it, and it's such about a shift and a willingness to learn and understand your value in the world. Our, 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 when I think about this, and I, I just got caught up because I was thinking to myself, okay, you and your wife are making the same amount of money, which is very common, right? right. You're, you're putting yourself in this position to go and build something on your own. You have a child on the way, you have a mortgage, so you're probably needing to make at least, you know, $7,000 a month, right? Whatever yep, that number yep. is. How in the world do you shift your mindset around money, around driving revenue and around your worth when all you've experienced is this pocket over here? Yeah. I mean, you're exactly right. Like we were making the same amount of money and we were making a very comfortable like living we were, I mean, we were able to take our, you know, two week vacation every year and, and go do some really cool things. Really my biggest mindset shift, like when it came to money, it was like, okay, well, 
I can either continue to make this comfortable amount of money and be okay with it, which I mean, a lot of people make that decision. I'm not saying it's the wrong decision, but I knew it was the wrong decision for me personally. Um, and I, I started realizing, you know, um, at the time, I think I was making like 70,000 and, uh, or 65, somewhere in that, in that area. And almost exactly what you said, like happened. It's just like, okay, like here I am building this business, uh, making 65,000 as an accountant and pretty soon, like my business was kind of matching what I was, what I was making. And I was like, wait a second. Like I worked, I went to school for four plus years. I've been climbing up the ranks as an accountant to get to this spot. And like, I've went through all these raises and, and all these things. And here I've built this business in, you know, the space of like five, six months. And it's because I was providing so much value to my customers that I was having customers that were sticking with me. I was finding new customers from just referrals. And then like my ethic to just go out and be consistent about finding new customers, uh, kind of on my cold outreach uh, efforts, um, all those, those three forces combined. And I was already matching like what I, what I was doing. And so, you know, I, I looked at it and I was just like, okay, so I can either stay and continue to make this probably for the next couple of years until I get that next promotion, uh, which is never guaranteed, or I can go bet on myself and then I can give myself a raise every single day. And ultimately that's what did it for me. Where it's like, well, yeah, I mean, like I said, that mindset shift of wanting to bet on myself, knowing that I could overcome those obstacles, even when I lost half my, half my client base, uh, due to seasonality. And then looking at it and being like, well, no, I can come back from this. I, I can find more clients. I can make a more consistent revenue, even through the slow months with these home service based businesses. And, and really realizing that uh, kind of pushed me to that next level.